Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. I think most people know in Definitive Edition, there's new graphics, civilizations, and campaigns. But in this video, I want to talk about some of the less obvious features that I've been enjoying just as much. This is really for anybody on the fence about buying the game again who wants to know what's different about it, or for people who maybe got it and just haven't discovered all the new features yet. I have 10 of my favorites here, though not necessarily in any particular order. Starting at number one is the farm and fish trap queue. Let's get the low hanging fruit out of the way first. This was a feature everybody wanted and was well advertised before the game came out. It takes some of the micromanagement out of the Imperial Age without fundamentally changing the game, since you still have to pay the same amount of wood every time to refresh them. For fish traps especially, it was annoying to build new ones because the old ones disintegrated when it was done, so you couldn't just right click and refresh it like you could on a farm. That being said, I love that it's given just as an option you can toggle since sometimes you won't want it on. If you're saving up for a market or trying to keep two archery ranges working continuously, just leave it off until you get to a point you don't have to worry as much about your wood income. For the next one, I'm going to group a few things together under the umbrella of new scenario editor options. The first one I've wanted for a long time, which is the ability to copy triggers. If you haven't done a lot in the scenario editor, this may not excite you very much, but this is a huge time saver. Imagine you have a scenario where you want to tribute a player gold if they bring a unit to a secret treasure. In other words, when they bring an object to the area, you tribute gold from Gaia to that player. Awesome. But now let's say you want player 2 to be able to do that as well. In HD, you had to recreate that entire trigger from scratch, taking a lot of time and also increasing the number of errors that you would see in scenarios. In Definitive Edition, you make the trigger once and then copy it and change the target player to someone else. The rest of the trigger is already made for you. Suddenly, what used to be a really time-consuming part of scenario design is super easy, barely an inconvenience. In addition to that, the number of options for triggers available has also increased dramatically. Everything from modifying unit icons, descriptions, cost, and all sorts of other things are really easy to do now. Now for the next feature, I can't tell you how many times I've done a test in the scenario editor, left without saving, and then realized I wanted to try one more thing with it. Most of the time I don't save quick tests, so this meant remaking the entire test from scratch, setting up the units, the AI, everything. Now it keeps an autosave of the most recent time you ran a scenario. Just a really simple feature that probably took one minute to implement and saves hours for the community overall. Next up, number three is the new Art of War advanced tutorials. Now I commend people who are brave enough to try to jump into multiplayer, but sometimes it's hard to know if you're ready. The old campaigns, at least, really don't prepare you for the style of gameplay found online. I'm sure lots of people over the years have loved playing the campaigns, went online, and immediately got discouraged by a rough game and never went back. It's a shame because that's now a player lost from the online community that just needed to learn a few more fundamentals to really start enjoying the experience. When you play online, teammates generally expect other players to know certain things, like how to fast castle into knights and how to defend at least somewhat when being rushed. Definitive Edition now comes with tutorials to introduce people to things like rushing and booming. It's a great addition and I'd recommend checking those out if you're new to the game or before going online. I think you'll enjoy the experience a lot more. Next at number 4 is being able to see if you can afford a tech or unit. Now this is a pretty subtle change and self-explanatory, but basically any tech you can't afford is now shaded out in red. I find it's nice to know at a glance which upgrades at the blacksmith or university I can afford, as well as just save a few clicks here and there. I think the more accessible that sort of basic information is, the better the user interface. Next up in number 5 are the two updates to deleting things. First of all, the game now tries to warn you when you're deleting an important building, like a town center wonder or a castle. You can turn this off if you don't want it, but it does have the potential to save you from an embarrassing situation. Even more exciting for me is you can also delete multiple units at once now by holding shift and pressing delete. It's not super often you'll delete your own units, but it can definitely happen if you over boom and want to free up population space for more military. Now again, for number 6, I'm going to group a few things together here as updates to queues, which really has three parts. The first is mixed queue, meaning you can now queue up multiple types of units and techs as long as you can afford them. Another type of queuing that's been updated is some added options to command queues. The biggest difference I notice is to villagers, like if you want to have them take sheep in a particular order. Another example is telling villagers which order you want them to take deer so they don't split and take from multiple at once. 
A third example is maybe you want buildings constructed in a particular order. When you're already looking at a unit and know what you want them to do for the next few minutes, it is nice to be able to just queue it all up and go pay attention somewhere else. Or if you have something very specific in mind you want for each individual unit. Also, yeah, you can rotate gates now. Pretty slick. For monks, this feature is especially great because you can have them grab a relic and then queue for them to return it before they even leave. There's nothing worse than hearing the relic sound and not remembering where on the map you sent your monks. The last type of queuing is the global queue, which I have to admit I don't look at very often. Theoretically, you can see all of the units and techs you have queued up in the corner, though I think of that more as a feature for people watching gameplay and following along what the player is doing than something that's really helpful for the player in the actual game. For number seven, again, I'm gonna put a few things together here under the group new game options. Right away, there are a few nice features like the ability to turn on shared exploration, basically giving everyone the Portuguese team bonus for shared team sites starting in Dark Age. There's also a great new feature where maps now show you what they look like at a glance. Especially for new maps that have been introduced, I find this is a nice touch. In previous expansions, it was a bit of a pain to find out what the new maps were by starting a game with each one. And with some of these special maps, it's not immediately obvious from the name what it would look like. It even shows you with a foot symbol which ones have a nomadic start, like the new Bohemia and Earth maps. In addition to new maps, there's also new settings for resources beyond just low, medium, and high. You can now do ultra high, which is the same as deathmatch, or even do infinite resources now, which is for people who just can't be bothered to make an economy. You can even go for random resources, which doesn't randomly pick one from that list, but instead gives a different but fairly generous number of resources every game. That being said, I think my favorite new setting is a game mode called Empire Wars. It's a new mode for people who want to cut out the Dark Age and jump straight into the Feudal Age with 27 villagers and a town already started for you. It's an interesting concept for people who just want to roll right into the action. I can definitely see the intention behind it and who it might appeal to. Number eight is the updates to the AI, which has learned some pretty cool tricks like scouting with sheep and luring deer, which it's actually really good at. It'll even block the deer from escaping in a way a human player never could. Of all the little things it does, the one that impresses me the most though is that it now builds markets in the corners to maximize gold. Now besides updates to its actual play and decision making, it also features a long list of commands you can send it that it now understands. It can do all sorts of things, like build walls between two points, delete buildings that you flare, which is pretty nice if they're blocking trade routes, and you can even strategize by telling it to focus on a particular type of unit or attack a specific player. It's a pretty long list of options to try to navigate real time during a game, but if there's anything you want it to do, it's probably in there somewhere. Next at number nine is the updates to the hotkeys. My new favorite hotkey feature is one that some of you guys have pointed out to me, which is the all building options. For example, with all barracks, instead of finding and grouping your barracks every game, you use the new hotkey to highlight all of your barracks on the map at once. The next part isn't new to Definitive Edition, but if you queue up a unit while holding Shift, it not only queues up five units, but even tries to spread them out between multiple buildings to keep them all working. If any barracks has fewer queued up than the others, then when I add new ones to the group, it goes to that one first. As much as I enjoy that one, there are other nice hotkey updates as well, like the ability to now assign technologies. For example, now when you reach Feudal Age, you can jump to your Lumber Camp and get the next Lumber Camp upgrade without using the mouse. If you're feeling extra confident with your hotkeys, you can even set buying and selling resources at the market now. Next up at number 10 is that you can see the number of villagers on each resource and the number of units you've selected. This change is great for keeping an eye on your economy and making sure that everything is balanced just how you want it to be. Going into the game, I didn't think I'd love this one as much as I do, but it's really hard to go back from it now. You even have the number of idle villagers right beside it. It's such a little update, but one that just makes you play better in Definitive Edition, and is probably the feature I notice and miss the most when I switch back to HD. But while I tried my best to keep this to a top 10, I just couldn't quite do it, and there's a number 11 which is playing with the embers that fly across the screen. You've probably all seen that you can do that in the victory screen, but did you know that you can also do it on the home screen too? Trying to stop as many as you can from reaching the right side is possibly the most addictive minigame I've ever played. It gets really intense sometimes. Oh man, that one was fast. See what I mean? But those are my top 11 features in Definitive Edition. I'd love to hear your favorites as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.